Hello, my name is Brian, and I will be showing you how to get PlayStation 1 working on your Android device. So for a couple things you will need to get this to work is the EPSXE app and a RAR app, which will unzip the games from their compacted size. So to do this, you'll first need to go to the Google Play Store. You'll want to go to the Google Play Store, and you'll want to type in E. P S X E. Hit enter or search on your phone and you'll be looking for this right here. EPSXE for Android. This app usually costs a few dollars, four or five bucks, uh, but it's well worth it. Once you have that installed, you'll need to get RAR, R A R. Then search for this. You will need this one right here should look like that. So once you have that installed, that completes that part of this setup. So the next thing you will need to make sure those are both on there, icons should look like that. You'll need the actual games. So to do this, you'll need to open your web browser and you will need to type MU Paradise into Google and search that. It should look like this you'll want to go to that website. This is the most trusted website for getting ROMs. Uh, there are no viruses or anything like that that I've ever found off this website, so it's pretty safe. So, to get PlayStation ROMs, you'll need to go to the top of the website and click ROMs, ISOs, and Games. Click on that. And then when it eventually opens, You'll be at a different website, or actually you'll be on the same website, sorry. Um, you'll want to scroll down, and you'll find a list of consoles. Uh, these are for various different systems. You'll be looking for ones for PlayStation, so you need this one right here that's highlighted. Then once you got that, click on that, it'll bring you to the PSX section. Uh, with a top list of all the most downloaded games. We want to find all of them, so we'll hit download PSX ISO. This will bring us a full list. <laughs> so in here you can search by any letter, A through Z, and numbers. And in this case I've already downloaded a game called Rayman, which is already ready on my phone. But for you guys, you'll need to download a game. So you click on the letter you like, scroll down. The thing to note with these is that you need to download anything that is within made in the US as an NTSC type game. Every other game that came out in a different country is a PAL region game, which don't usually work on American consoles. Same goes for emulators. Uh, so you need to make sure you download something that has U at the end of it. Uh, stay away from E or J. Those are for European or J Japanese games. You won't be able to understand them anyways, so stick to U based. So once you find a game you want, you click on it. It'll bring you to the first website. You'll want to scroll down halfway to the page after you've clicked on it. Here you can actually give you a bio on it and pictures of the game you want. And once you're sure it's the game you want, you'll want to scroll down halfway to the page and look for this. It'll say the file size on of the compacted uh, file. You'll want to click on that. And then you want to scroll down a quarter of the page again and click on the same thing. It'll give you file size and the type of the thing. And then that will start the download. Sometimes you'll have to wait, but most cases, unless you're a premium member, you can only download one game at a time. So now this has started the download on my phone. It should show up underneath your notification bar, and this could take forever or a short amount of time, depending on your internet speed of your phone and how much, how big the file size is. So once we have that, the game is downloading. So in this case, I already have Rayman. So another thing you will need to make sure your phone has is a file browser. Most phones usually have this built in, but in some cases you may not have it. 
uh, if you need to, you can go to the Google Play Store and actually download one. I either recommend File Manager or ES File Explorer. Uh, either of these will work. Uh, once you have that, you'll want to open that up. And in most cases, when you download anything through the Google Chrome browser, it should go to your default internal storage under the download folder. So internal storage, you also want to make sure you have enough space on your phone to download these games. Otherwise, you will come into problems. I recommend at least four, five gigabytes free on your phone because when the game is first downloaded, it'll be about 180 megabytes compressed, but you'll still need to uncompress it. So it'll be a bigger file size after it's been uncompressed. So you want to scroll down to download. This is where most cases where it will go. Rayman is already here, and as you can see, our type Delta is already still being downloaded. So we want to open Rayman. So this game will not work, and the emulator will not be able to read it until we tell it to be uncompact, where it can be read by the emulator. So we need to click on it. In most cases on other phones, it'll give you an option of what you want to open it with. Make sure you open it with RAR. Once you correctly open it with RAR, it should look like this. In Rayman's case, it is a bunch of files that make up one whole game. You'll want to select every one of these by hitting this top bar up here. That'll select everything if you have a lot of files. Make sure you select everything, otherwise the game will be incomplete and be unable to be read by the emulator. So once that's done and everything is selected, you'll want to hit this button up here, Extract Files. It'll bring you to the web page. Uh, so the next thing is I would recommend keeping everything the same right here, but you'll want to make sure you tell it to where you want the games to go. In this case, we want Rayman to go to the SD card. So it'll bring you, once you hit that, it'll bring you to this. Usually you want to back out of the files. And in this case, it is still under the emulated zero, which in most cases on most phones means the internal storage. So we need to scroll to the very top and hit this one again and again. And in my case, my SD card is a series of numbers. I want to hit that and go into this folder. This is the main directory of my SD card. And now from here, I can tell it anywhere I want it to be put. I've made a folder on my SD card called ROMs. Now you can plug your SD card into your computer and then modify these files accordingly. You can make a new folder called ROMs. And that's what I recommend doing. I made one for PSX. So in here I have all my games. So, I want this to be my web page, or my download directory for all my, my game, Rayman. So I just hit OK. It'll go into this folder. Then once that's ready and the directory is put, just hit OK again. It'll begin to extract your game into that folder. This could take a really short time or a long time depending on how big the game is. So just be patient. Okay, so once you get near the end, just let it do its thing until it reaches 100%. And now it's done. Usually you'll, in this free version of the app, you'll have an ad that pops up, but I would just disregard the app. And then now all the games have been placed in that folder. This can look like sometimes kind of a mess in your SD card, which I recommend just making a folder and then highlighting all of these and throwing them in that folder. The emulator will just read it as one tile essentially for the game, so you won't see all this in the emulator. So once that's done, the game is successfully on the SD card at this point. Now what you can do is you can actually go and launch the EPSX app, and it should look like this. Now I recommend going to preferences and setting up different stuff. I would keep most stuff the same. The only things here that you should actually ever mess with is maybe show FPS. Uh, simulated BIOS is usually on by default. Um, and what this BIOS is, is it's a, fr it's a firmware for the console. And it's needed in most cases to make it work. Without it, it cannot work. Uh, simulated BIOS isn't as best as having a real BIOS, but you can also get a BIOS off of the emu paradise site and i will show you how to do that here in a sec but for most part 
since you don't have one, make sure you have auto detect or enabled on by default. So the only other thing you should ever have on in here, uh, I recommend setting screen ratio to either four by three or stretch. Screen color depth should be 16 for faster. So any setting in here should be good set at its lower settings. Video render can be at either hardware with, or hardware with shaders or OpenGL plugin. Those ones work. Do not use software. It's slow. Uh, this emulator also has support for VR modes. So if you have a VR helmet that your phone can actually go into, this is will actually work for that. And the internal resolution, one is about the original resolution of what games would look like. Uh, two makes games look a lot better, higher resolution. Uh, three or four is actually, I would only recommend for high-end phones. And you should make sure hardware soft threading mode is on two threads if you have a, a modern phone. And then if you go to near the bottom, you can actually set up your controller. I have my emulator set up to work with a Bluetooth controller, which this emulator will actually work with. But you can also choose on-screen controls. To do touchscreen controls, most time the emulator has it enabled by default. But you can enter it in here through touchscreen gamepad. And you can set all different types of skins for what your uh, thing will look like, your on-screen controls and the transparency of them can all be set there. So I recommend checking that out. Uh, don't never, you don't need to mess with the mem cards. Uh, those are usually set up by default when the emulator is launched. And if you want that original PlayStation boot up logo, you can set it here at the very bottom. Uh, turn it off if you want the games to boot up faster, or if you want it more original, set it to on. And once you have that, you can go back out. It'll save your preferences. Uh, so if you have the BIOS on your uh, emulator, you can actually set it up here. Um, I recommend using this if you... Uh, yeah, I recommend using this if you need to set up the memory card or mess with the memory cards in any way. This is just like on the original PlayStation. From here, you can set up all, all your stuff. You can delete stuff in the memory cards. Uh, but EPSXE also has a built-in save state, which works a lot better than using the M uh, mem cards, essentially. And so for running the game, you'll hit run game. Uh, and then for most cases, it should automatically find whatever games you have on your phone. But I recommend if it gives prompts you for it, hit all or SD card and scan those. So from here, you'll have any game on here. So Rayman should show up in most cases. And so you want to hit rescan SD card and hit all. It'll begin to scan for everything in here if uh, you don't see your game show up. And in most cases, this can take a while, depending on how much stuff is on your phone. In my case, on my phone, I have a lot of music on my phone and a lot of games. So it can take a bit. Okay, and there it is. Rayman has now shown up. And now, from here, the game should be ready to go. But I won't run the game because I know it works. So, if you want to get BIOS, a BIOS file for your emulator, the best way to do that is to actually Hold on a sec. Get rid of all this. Is go back to the website on MU Paradise. And they have a bunch of different uh, BIOS files on here. 
that'll make your uh, emulator work even better. And to go here, you go here at the top and hit BIOS files. Okay, once you got to that website, you can want to scroll down. And you're looking for PlayStation BIOS. And there'll be uh, several different ones on here, so it can be kind of confusing to find the right one. I recommend PCSX BIOS SCPH1001. And the SCPH is usually the model of the PlayStation. And 1001 was kind of an earlier model. And once you download it, it should show up under here. And it should be downloaded into your download folder. You can either go in back into your file browser, navigate to where it was actually installed, or downloaded in this case, would be under download, and it would show up under PSX BIOS right here. You can either take that file and move it to wherever you want on your phone, as long as you can find it within the PlayStation emulator. So in this case, it's in a download folder. Now my uh, PSX, EPSXE app is already set up for a BIOS. So you usually want to go to preferences, turn off simulated BIOS, Go to BIOS file and navigate on your SD card or wherever you have that file and click on it. In this case, we want to go back a folder, back, go to SD card, navigate to download folder, and once the file is fully downloaded, it should appear in here. You'll want to click on that, and that'll set the path to where the BIOS file is actually at. So once you have that set up, your emulator is fully running. And that concludes how to get EPSXE working on your phone.